and I don't think it is wise to bring it up. Why didn't I say it? Because it should not be said in public. Because it should not be said in public. I don't want to get into that issue. I don't want to get into that issue. I don't even want to be explicit. It should only be discussed amongst those who are familiar with this science. It should never be brought up in public. This is not something you discuss amongst the masses, yeah. It's not wise. It's not wise. Is the Quran perfectly preserved and miraculously preserved? Is there only one Quran? Are there any differences in the text? Do the differences affect the meaning? Do the manuscripts match the Quran we have today? Did the companions of Muhammad recite the Quran differently? If you are confused, then you came to the right place. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. My friend Abdullah Gondal has taken the time to put together some information that is extremely damaging to the standard narrative. This is not new information, but this is information that has been available in academia that has not been widely disseminated. We are going to change that. He has summarized this beautifully with examples from the Sana'a manuscript and variants in the standard Quran. Get ready because this is going to blow apart the preservation myth. These are examples of some of the holes that Yasir Qadi was mentioning. Three points before we get into it. Number one, the Quran doesn't even mention these variants, which makes it more comical. This is similar to Shia saying the most important article of faith is the 12 infallible Imams, yet nowhere in the Quran do we find their mention. So if the variants are a feature, not a bug, why aren't they mentioned in the Quran? This is also a big problem for Quranists because the Quran claims to be preserved but the existence of variants debunks the Quran. The hadith of seven ahruf is the only saving grace. Number two, the common response by Muslim apologists is that these variants are different tribal dialects that Allah revealed them in to make it easier for them. What dialect would be confused by saying and those instead of those? Can you imagine some Arab in the desert saying yeah, I can't understand that because it says those when we normally say and those. There's absolutely no way different tribal dialects are required to either exclude or include things like a wow or a huwa, meaning and or he. If Allah was going to worry about some tribes not understanding it, then what about the Greek and Persian speaking populations in the north of Arabia who would be the majority of the population of the Ummah within a couple of decades? Perhaps Allah should have revealed a Greek and Persian ahruf also? Number three, was it really worth it for Allah to go to such lengths to reveal the Quran in several ahruf for the sake of the Benu this and that, but then cause such controversy and even fighting later on for the next 1400 years? Let's look at some of the variants found in the lower text of the Sana Palimpsest, an alleged companion codex hidden under the Uthmanic text. The scholar Marjin Wen Putin has stated that Asma Hilali is wrong and nobody else follows her in the idea that Sana manuscripts were a student copy. He wrote, The Sana palimpsest absolutely is a Quran. Asma Hilali is wrong about this. I don't think anyone else follows her in this idea. From here on, Sana will be used to refer to the lower text of the palimpsest. Of particular interest is the omission of the word Sadaqa, which translates to charity. The standard text offers you three ways to fulfill the compensation. A. Fasting for three days. B. Sadaqah. C. Animal sacrifice. But the Sadaqah option does not exist in the lower text. That has many theological implications. We also notice the omission of the word your heads in the Sana'a text, which could raise the question of whether other bodily hair needs to be shaved. This verse has significant additions and changes to the sentence structure. The words light and guidance are switched in order. Nabiyun is changed with Anbiya. The Sana text has a significant addition of by what Allah has revealed in it and judged by it while omitting the word Nas, mankind. This verse appears significantly different and it could be argued that the difference between withdraw from them and do not come near them can have different implications. The Sana'a text has major sentence structural deviations from the standard text similar to the previous example. Sana'a text omits and exchanges some words for synonyms. Here we see a drastic change. The standard text reads and establish prayer and give zakat. Whereas the Sana'a text reads and do jihad in the way of Allah. The word jihad is not synonymous to praying and giving charity. The current version omits the more violent reading. Again, we observe the phrase, Indeed, my bones have weakened, and 
is absent in the Sana'a text. We find an additional word, Rabbi, Lord, in the Sana'a text. The verse appears quite different. Allah is quoting Zakariya. That phrase is nowhere else to be found in the Quran attributed to Zakariya. That leads me to question if he ever spoke those words. Or is this another example of the Quran being revised to strengthen a theological point? The Sana'a text has two additional phrases compared to the standard text. The first addition is, then they increased in their disbelief. And the second being, that is because they are a nation that. In this case, the Sana'a version offers more explanation and detail. Was this intentionally removed or forgotten? The Sana'a text says, they have exchanged the covenant with Allah and the oaths for a small price. But the modern text says they have exchanged the signs of Allah for a small price, which alters the meaning. A variation occurs later where standard text reads from his way while Sana reads the way of Allah. You might ask, why does this matter? His way or the way of Allah? Same difference, right? The issue is human books have these type of differences. This book is the literal speech of Allah, which is a correct ayah. And keep in mind, this is not a difference of dialect or pronunciation. Having an extra word Allah instead of him, these are actual word differences. Surah Tawbah verse 80 is Allah condemning Muhammad for praying for the hypocrites. The difference is in the Sana'a version, it's a simple Allah will not forgive them. In the standard text, it says that is because they disbelieved in Allah and his messenger and says never will forgive them. More theological justification? Also, in an Uthmanic manuscript shown by Dr. Daniel Brubaker, the verse has the phrase 70 times, as in, ask for forgiveness 70 times, omitted. So we have three manuscripts with three different readings of the verse. This could be a scribal mistake or a forgery. If more than half of the verse is a variation, is it still the same verse? Here are some more anomalies found in different manuscripts. Now let's put aside the manuscripts and shift our focus to modern Qurans. Do all the modern Quran variants have identical text? Do all the agreed upon variants that we see affect the meaning? In this example, the difference may seem minor, but it divided the Shias and Sunni. In the predominant Hafs reading, we find the word Al-Julakum, but in the Susi reading, we find Al-Julikum. The difference renders Hafs to mean wash your feet, while Susi says, wipe your heads and your feet. So do we wipe or wash our feet during ablution? The verse talks about compensation for missing a fast. The Hafs reading is Ta'amu Miskin, while Wash is Ta'ami Masakin. Singular turns to plural. According to Hafs, you feed a poor person, while Wash says poor people. Do we feed one poor person? Or many people, one missed fast equates to one poor person, or someone can miss 10 fasts and feed only three people and the competition is valid. Here we see Kala versus Kol. Hafs reads Kol, which implies Allah commanded Muhammad to say the following words, while Wash reads Kala meaning said, which implies Allah is quoting Muhammad's words. So did Allah quote Muhammad to say it or Muhammad said it and Allah quoted him. I hope you realize the theological implications. There's a huge difference here. This specific variant is a common occurrence. We are not done yet. Here are a few dozen variants in the modern Quran with special commentary from Yasir Qadi. That the standard narrative, that the standard narrative, or that the standard narrative, you'll finish as holes, in it as holes. That the standard narrative, that the standard narrative, or that the standard narrative, you'll finish as holes, in it as holes. This is a topic that when you're the beginning beginning student of knowledge, you're like, what is all of this going on? What is all of this going on here? When you go a little bit more, you learn to simply memorize what your teachers say and regurgitate it out. And you don't fully comprehend. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward. Things get very, very awkward. That the standard narrative, that the standard narrative, or that the standard narrative you'll finish as holes in it as holes that the standard narrative that the standard narrative or that the 
standard narrative you'll finish as holes finish. as holes and i don't think it is wise. in conclusion the reasons given by muslim scholars as to why there are variants don't make any sense the quran itself doesn't even mention variants the type of variants we find wouldn't fall under dialects they are clearly interpolations omissions and insertions that reflect transmission and scribal errors and have nothing to do with divinely revealed options for some tribe. The Quran is not preserved. The cat is out of the bag and it's too late to undo the damage. Thanks for watching. Please consider supporting me on Patreon or joining the channel below. We don't have a large support network that allows us to put time and money into this. The money you send will be used to continue supporting the work that we are doing and grow the channel. I'd love to do this full time one day. And a special thanks to Abdullah Gondal for taking days of his time to put together all of this text and make this presentation. We hope that these slides will help you to see that the Quran was actually not preserved. If you're a Muslim, this might be scary for you to realize that what you were sold is a lie. You might be feeling confused or even angry. This is okay. Be brave and face your doubts. Keep learning and I am confident you will find your way through Islam. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.